Let's go check on our quail. Ah. Welcome back to our channel, Hume's Little Homestead. this winter and we're gonna add a light to them very soon but right now we just wanted them in the garage to be a little warmer it's also quieter in there less wind it's pretty windy here where we live so oh goodness he's climbing the wood pile what are you doing are you getting the kitty kitty Emmett come here Come here, bud. No, let the kitty go. That's not nice. Come here. That's dangerous. Okay, come on, let's go check on the quail. We put a tarp down to catch their poo and we checked on them last night and we were surprised to see how much they had already pooped. So we're really grateful we put a tarp down. I think we're going to put something else, some kind of tray to catch the poop before it gets to the tarp so that we can easily dump it out this winter and use it for fertilizer and we'll use it for compost. You want to compost their poop before you use it for fertilizer. Anyway, looks like they're doing well. They seemed, last night anyway, they seemed really happy. They're kind of shivering. That's why I wanted to move them into the garage where it's warmer. They're just so much smaller than chickens. I don't know. We read that they could withstand temperatures to negative 20, but they just seem so fragile to me that I just, I don't want to risk that. And look, they're shivering. They look so cold. Anyway, they're doing well. I'm gonna get them some fresh food and water. Looks like you guys had a good night in the garage. It's a bit windy today, so I wanted to explain what I'm doing with our trees inside before I go out and do it. I will show you what I'm doing, but I'm also gonna tell you what I'm doing really fast. So what I like to do with our trees before winter hits, right, right at this time of the year when it's starting to get cold, it's barely starting to freeze, it's starting to get in that light freeze temperature area and what I like to do is I like to give them some some form of manure or fertilizer last year I did rabbit manure and then I also filled I have our trees in tomato cages these are trees that we started from seed I have them in tomato cages and I have them wrapped around with chicken wire so no rabbits would eat them because they were really short last year they were about this tall and I lost a few of the pear trees to rabbits coming and eating them or any other critter I don't know maybe mice were eating them just critters were eating them so I put wrapped the tomato cages in chicken wire and that has made all of the critters this deterred things so anyway what I did last year is I filled these tomato cages all the way full with chopped straw so that the entire tree was completely insulated. This year, because the trees are two years old, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to cover probably with about this much of composted mulch. And I've got a can and I'll probably just fill the whole can up. It's a food storage can that I use just to scoop chicken feed out, but I'm gonna use that can and I'm probably gonna fill that all the way up to the top and that's how much compost I'm gonna put on. I'll probably put about three to four cups, this is like kitchen measure, measurements, three to four cups of 
the steer manure that I purchased for these trees. So I'm gonna put steer manure down first on each tree, and then I'm gonna put a good layer of the composted mulch. So that's what I'm doing. And before we go outside in the wind, I'm, I'm gonna cover the video with some nice music so that you're not hearing that wind in your ears. It can get really loud on the videos and it's not very fun to listen to or try and talk in. But I wanted to show you the pepper plants because it's been a couple days since I trimmed them and I also wanted to show you the lily plants, the bulbil experiment that I'm doing. Bulbils, bulbils, bulbils. I don't know how to say it. But I will show you those experiments right now. This is the carnival bell pepper and I did not trim this pepper. <laughs> that leaf just fell off. Anyway, I didn't trim this pepper and I also am inspecting for aphids and I'm not seeing any so I think that we may have gotten the aphid situation under control. I'm thinking about treating them one more time with neem oil so that would be three treatments of neem oil and I don't know if I want to trim it. It's looking pretty good. The next one is the serrano pepper. I also did not trim this one and I do see some evidence where there were aphids right there that black bug but I think they're all pretty much taken care of but like I said I think I'm going to treat them one more time now this plant surprised me this is one that I trimmed and it's growing back so fast this is the pepperoncini pepperoncino peppercini I always said peppercini but I don't even know if I spelled this correctly on there. Anyway, I think I did, but if I didn't, just let me know. <laughs> and let me know how you say it, how you pronounce this pepper. Anyway, I trimmed this one way back, and it is surprising me how quickly little buds are sprouting on it. So that was pretty cool. And next plant here was the habanero and this is the one we accidentally treated with neem oil and all the leaves burned up in the sun because we accidentally left it outside all day so i trimmed this one way back and these were um little leaves were looking really bushy anyway so i was expecting it to be okay but it also has some of those little tiny leaves starting at each I think they're called nodules. Anyway, I see a lot of new growth. And the ancho pepper also is sprouting some new leaves really quickly as well. Emmett got into the paint back here and decided our room needed a paint job. <laughs> he actually got it all over the carpet and we got a steam cleaner. We purchased a steam cleaner just to try and get this paint out and it actually did a really, really good job. There's only one spot that you can still see a little bit of the paint, I'll show you. Right here is where you can still see it, but we just didn't move this bookshelf. I think if we move this bookshelf, that steam cleaner will be able to lift this little strip of paint. But it was all over the floor and it was black paint, so I'm pretty impressed. Oh, there's a leaf. The next pepper is Paseo Bajio. I didn't trim this one, and this one had aphids on it. And you can see they turn black when they die. It's kind of weird. They were green, now they're black and dead. <laughs> so this one will definitely be getting... I, I think I'll just treat them all again. I'll spray them off with the hose again, and then treat them with the neem oil and bring them back in and pull the blinds back like I did so that the sun doesn't burn them. They have responded really well to the treatment. Here's the cayenne pepper. And I did trim this one back and it is starting to grow back nicely. And here's our santaka pepper. I didn't trim this one, but it's looking pretty good. I don't see any evidence of bugs on it, so that's really exciting. Here's the second cayenne pepper. Oh look, a little tiny pepper is growing. So I was hoping that these would produce peppers over the winter by bringing them inside, but I had—I don't know, my hopes aren't very high because I don't have these under grow lights. If, if I could hook a grow light into the ceiling so that it's right here at their level, then I'll let you know 
what I plan with that, but we'll see what happens with them not under grow lights. I just wanted to kind of save them so I didn't have to start all over from seed. This is the Thai hot pepper, and it has chili peppers on it as well. And it's looking really good. I didn't trim it because I wanted these two peppers to have a chance to ripen because they're fully, that's how big they get. They're small peppers, but I definitely want to trim this one down here because it has, it has all these little leaf buds and I think that I could get it to bush out a lot more if I trimmed this. It almost looks like a truffle tree from the Lorax. It's like long, skinny, and then poof, a huge bush at the very top. And I'd like the whole plant to be bushy like that. And the last one I have here is jalapeno. And it's responding really well to the trim and the neem oil as well. There's a whole bunch of little leaf buds and new growth. So I'm really excited to see that because I just... I really want these plants to be full and bushy next year for when it's time to plant them out in the spring. Next project we'll look at here is the one that the mice got into. I am really excited to see these little things that look like blades of grass. I believe those are the lily plants because they're coming up all over. There's even one small one right there. There's one there. So. I'm thinking go ahead and bury them because those ones look to be doing really well. The, this one's not buried over here. Oh, it's better in the shade to see. You can see it's root forming and it's got that same type of blade of grass type sprouted. So I'm thinking, go ahead and bury them if you're going to do this experiment, if you find these same types of things. So, in fact, I think I'm going to go ahead and bury these ones that are out because their roots just look dry. So the experiment was, the lily plant drops these off naturally on the ground, and the experiment was to see if they would do better drop being dropped like nature would do, or being buried. And these ones were buried, and the buried ones did better. So... In fact, I'm going to do that right now. I'm just going to dig some small holes and bury these down so that their roots, because their roots seem to be drying out a little bit. I'm just going to bury them. And if they're buried, it looks like the mice don't steal them. So <laughs> those ones were buried and the mice didn't steal them. I'm going to bury this one. Um, really shallow since it's got a little blade started. Oops. Let's see if I can uncover that blade. I'm being real gentle here. So there we go. They're all buried now. I think it's safe to say for this experiment, go ahead and bury your bubbles if you find them and collect them in the fall. And hopefully each one of those will make a new lily plant. It's really neat to see how tiny they start. All right, let's head out. We're going to put the steer manure down first on these trees and the compost. And I'm also going to do this with the blackberry bush that I showed you all yesterday. And I will do it too. I have a couple of bigger trees. I have a peach tree that we got, my in-laws bought us. After we lost Skylar, they brought us a tree, and it's just, uh, I think it's an Alberta peach tree or a Georgia peach tree. I'm not sure, but it was from a feed store, so that one will produce real fruit. Real fruit. I think the other ones will produce fruit. That one will produce fruit that tastes good, probably. <laughs> and I've got two apple trees in the back that were also given to me by my in-laws, and I will put, do the same thing. I'll put steer manure and compost down on all of those trees. So let's go out and get to work.
excited. Look how thick this tree trunk is getting. That's so neat. blackberry bush I'm gonna try and do something a little bit different this side right here has roots growing on it and I want to encourage it to grow that way it's trying to go this way and this way is the garden door um, garden gate where it opens and closes and I'd rather my blackberry bushes it'd be great if it will just make a few more plants by itself so I'm going to use some regular potting soil this is just what I have. If I was gonna buy something, I'd probably use garden, in the garden ground one. But I just have potting mix. I'm gonna bury the roots. So it's right here. I'm gonna encourage it to go this direction. And I'm gonna bury them right here with this potting mix. Then I'm gonna also put steer manure and mulch around this pot and the spot that I bury over here. funny but I'm so curious to see if it will sprout another blackberry bush I am really excited about that and then I would have them going this direction and I wasn't gonna plant garlic there this year but I'm so happy that it grew while I'm over here I'm going to add some manure around the garlic and some mulch I'm also going to do that with the herbs over here with my oregano. I'm hoping for this oregano plant to grow nice and big, so I'm gonna mulch around it. And this is my chamomile. I think I'll trim it back and mulch it as well. tree I've got to do is our peach tree in the front 
there's some carrots down here. This used to be our garden area and it looks like some things have just started growing on their own. I think that's arugula. Anyway, that's kind of funny. So last year I'm doing is our peach tree in the front yard. I wanted to go over the exact measurements of steer manure and composted mulch that I used. For the small trees, I used about this much in this can. So like I was saying before, I think that's about four kitchen cups for the small trees. And then one full can. This is just an old food storage. It used to have instant potatoes in it. So uh, one full can of this for the small trees. For the large trees, I used one full can of steer manure and four full cans of composted mulch. Around the herbs and the berry bush, I just did as much, I, I got a layer about this thick, probably three inches thick of a mixture of the steer manure and the mulch. So that's what I did and I wanted to give exact measurements real quick before I forgot. So there you go. Well, that's what I do to prepare my trees and this is my first time having a berry bush, <laughs> my berry bushes and my first time trying to overwinter herbs outside as well. So this is what I do to prepare for winter for my trees, bushes and herbs. I would love to know what you do and I'm open to all suggestions like I've mentioned before, we're a bit new. I have been gardening for a long time but I haven't really gardened perennials that, that long. So. Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. If you have, thank you so much. We appreciate it. We're so grateful to meet, meet you all and for all the new faces that have stopped by our channel. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Bye. Have a wonderful day.